Today we have Red Elm. I've never turned Red Elm before. This comes to us from viewer Arnold, who likes to be called Bum. B-U-M. Bum. The piece is about 11 and a half by 7 and a half by 4 inches on that end and about 2 and a half inches on the other end. You're looking at the top. It's going to be a, well, I can't say live edge. Uh, I don't know what I can say. I'm not sure how I'm going to turn it. It's not going to be a round bowl. I think I'm going to leave all four corners, I think. Uh, however, I don't intend for it to be a winged bowl either. I, I don't know what I... I I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy. Let's get to it. The wood has a real pretty color and grain to it. This will be the bottom. Pretty well weathered. There's some cracks in there. Uh, pretty good sized cracks, but they don't go far. Same over here. With this being the bottom, I'm going to end up turning much of this thickness away. So it'll come up more closer to this edge and I don't know if we'll go with a tenon or a recess. I am going to find the middle and poke a hole in there for my woodworm screw and get it mounted up on the lathe and we'll get to turning. We're going to be turning at 600 rpm, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Just trying to get a flat enough area here for a cannon or a recess. Oh, just about flat enough, just about, not quite. Maybe I'll start, uh, maybe I'll leave that for a minute and start shaping this side. I really don't want to knock those points off, so it's going to take a little finesse or something. I'm also going to put a glove on when you're working on this edge at this angle. It can hurt. wood's a whole lot harder than you might think. I am going to go sharpen up. I'll be right back. I guess we'll work on that for a little bit. Well, I got to looking at this. You see these points? That's not what I had in mind, but it's starting to show up on this point here. It hasn't shown up on that one yet. But if I come in here a little quicker, a little sooner, it will. Let me get my mask and face shield back on and we'll get at it.
I, I don't like turning away perfectly good wood to achieve a design, and that's exactly what I'm doing here, is turning away perfectly good wood, but it might be worth it if we can pull it off. Trying to get this point here to drop down like this is. It's never going to happen apparently. It's begun just barely. But now I have a pretty straight edge here which is what I was after. Pretty straight edge here and there and there. So it's just, just about all I can do. Obviously I need to clean up my cuts. I'm going to try coming in this way. If only I could see it. Yeah, I just cannot see it. Somewhere around here. I'm going to try my scraper. That's the best I can do. Hmm. Recess or tenon? Recess or tenon? Boy, weird shape, huh? Yeah, I, I guess we can do a recess now. No, tenon. <laughs> I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. And that's good. Well, whatever it is, time to sand it. I'm going to sand these uh, two edges with my Sandoflex, these two natural edges, Sandoflex at 180 grit. And that's as fine as I'll go on those. And I think these two edges here I'll just sand with my sanding disc. When I'm done with the Sandoflex I'll switch to my 2 inch sanding disc starting at 80 grit. But first I'm going to sand these corners. I don't want to call them wings because I didn't set out to make a wing bowl. So I'm not calling it a winged bowl. Maybe I will. Some of you folks just don't like winged bowls. Have you read the comments? Oh my goodness. Anyway, so I'll, I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse at about 400 RPM to sand these. But first I'm going to sand them in place like this. And I'll show you what all that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Yeah, that makes quite a bit of difference. So like that, and then with the lathe spinning in reverse. Like 
that. That won't be too bad. And I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some kind of finish on there. See you in a bit. This is what I call angry wood. I'm not sure what I mean by that exactly. It's hard for me to explain it to you. It's very hard, kind of wild. It won't do what I want it to do. Sanding was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be because of these wings. It's a pretty wood, I can see that. It just doesn't want to give me a break. Nonconformist. And I know it's a very odd shape and some people get bothered by that. They think, you know, you got a lathe, you make round things. Things aren't always round. I, I find a round, a, a round bowl, I just find it boring. This is sanding sealer, shellac based sanding sealer. And I'll apply two coats of this and then two coats of shellac. And I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside, which should be a whole lot easier. Doesn't mean it's going to do what I want it to do, but at least I don't have to worry about some kind of design. All I got to do is make a hole. But that's going to be tomorrow because I got a late start today. So have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Well, I got a decent finish on the outside, the bottom. It's not great, but it's way better than I thought it was going to be. We're going to be turning at 560 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. You may have heard me talk about the tailstock getting in the way. That's that's what's happening here. I'm hitting that hand wheel on the tailstock. I really need to be over here to get the right angle. So I'm going to have to get rid of the tailstock. I you can you can go this way once in a while. It's a bad idea. Easy to get a catch. You saw me do it there a little bit, but you you really want to you really want to be clear over there. Also, I saw these cracks. I think I pointed them out at the beginning. Maybe you can see this crack right here. And it, it only comes on the, on the bottom side. It only comes down about a half an inch. But then over here, there's another one right here. And they connect. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. Uh, they don't connect on the outside at the bottom of the bowl. They don't connect there, so I think we're okay. I think we'll turn through it mostly, but you know, anything can happen. I just want to check where we are here as best I can. Oh, we got a ways to go. I can also come out here further. Well, although I'm going to go sharpen up first. I wonder if I can pick the speed up any. No, nope, not much. 600. Oh, it's going to come further, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what you gotta be careful of. Get a little bit closer to center and see where we are. Oh, we're about five eighths of an inch. The grain's getting pretty in there.
I think that'll probably do it. Yeah, we're good. Quarter inch. Okay, I'm a little afraid to scrape this wood. Some wood just doesn't like it, and I think this is one of them. So I'm just not going to. And I usually round over this edge or put a bead on there. I don't think a bead would be appropriate in this case. We've got all these sharp edges. We should, we should follow that. So that means, what does it mean? Time for sanding. I'm going to be sanding with my two inch disc starting at 80 grit. I'm going to have the lathe spinning in reverse at uh, 360 RPM. I'll work up through 400 grit and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And I'll turn forward as well. And that's going to be easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. <laughs> I wish you could feel this. It's so silky. Silky. That's what you guys came up with. That was the most common comment as a replacement for smooth. Silky. And I will admit, I googled it uh, before before I even posted the video. And, and I read Silky and it, I didn't like it. Or it. It didn't strike me. But the more I think about it and the more you guys say it, the more it fits. Silky. Which is actually amazing that it is silky because it's just it's just angry wood and I, I wish I could explain what that means like I said it, it doesn't do what I want it to do necessarily but uh, it's it's more than that I guess it's the you know this is a crotch and you have all these branch sections coming off the crotch and they're all split and nasty looking and it took a lot of work to get it to where it is. So it's kind of angry. But at the same time, it's kind of given up. It relinquished its hold on me. I said, okay, okay, I'll be pretty. How's that? So there you have it. Uh, another coat of this sanding sealer, two coats of shellac. I'll bring you back and we'll take the tenon off. See you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl. And bring up my tailstock. I still have a center hole there for reference, so I could just drive my live center into that. Bring up my tool rest, spin the piece up, see if it's running true. And it is. Apply a little pressure, turn the speed up to about 530. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence removing that tenon. Now there is a crack in that tenon right here, see? So, it's a little bit scary. It's getting thinner though, so maybe it'll be okay. We just don't want it to break loose before we're ready, that's all. And I want to check for clearance. And we just barely have clearance and the crack. Crack is pretty much gone, so I think we're okay. Just keep working it away here. Uh-oh. Got to be careful now. half there isn't it. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl guide so that I can get in there closer and I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 rpm.
Now that's pretty small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. Pressure towards the headstock. And we're done. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One red elm accidental winged bowl in the book. I really did not intend to make a winged bowl. Maybe if I would have thought it out a little further, I would have known that's what would have come from this shape. I just, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know if I was going to round over the corners or round up the whole thing and make it a round bowl. I didn't know. Uh, I really like it, as it turns out, and I even have a name for it. I'm going to call it Perfection in the Midst of Confusion. <laughs> uh, you've got a perfectly round bowl, nice sharp edges, clean as a whistle, and then you've got natural edges here and here, and then you've got cut edges here and here and then you've got uh, a finished semi well it's finished but semi perfect on the bottom perfection in the midst of confusion what the heck is it but you know what I would really rather have this setting on my table than a round bowl the, people are gonna look at this and and want to touch it and, and wonder what was the guy thinking? What brought that on? It's, it's an interesting piece. And it's just, it's a nice piece of wood, red elm, from Wisconsin, from Bum. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Bum, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.